What is going on you stallions and stallionettes, AK40 Kevin here in the gamer heaven. I've had my hands on the Razer Viper Ultimate for a little over a month now and I gotta say this has definitely been my favorite first person shooter mouse that I've ever ever tested or used and I've tested just about the entire lineup from Logitech, SteelSeries, Corsair, Razer. So I've had my hands on a fair bit of mice but I gotta say this is the miciest rat mouse I've ever played with in my life. It's insanely light, super good stock sensor, amazing stock skates on there, good ergonomic design, good grips on the side, zero lag or latency wireless connection with that hyperspeed technology from Razer, remarkable battery life. I was super surprised about that because I was used to my uh, Razer Lance head where I would have to charge it every single day. I mean, I've had that thing for two and a half years. I guess the battery life degraded over time, but this thing, uh, they advertise 70 hours. That is with the RGB off. We will cover that when we go through the settings, but um, I've been easily able to get four or five days of long gameplay sessions before this thing needs to be charged. And it does have a nice little, a nice little RGB dock. That's really cool. It indicates the status light of the battery and you can actually plug in the USB dongle, uh, wireless adapter to the actual dock. So if you don't want to have to use two USB ports, one for the dongle, one for the RGB charger dock, you just plug it into there. It's like a pass through and then bam, you're good to go there. And then last, but certainly not least, these aren't mechanical switches. They are optical switches. So a light beam sensor in there. So they actuate as soon as the light beam is broken, which is super awesome. They're very light, very crispy. And also they're about a quarter to maybe third the volume of traditional mechanical switches. So if you're streaming or recording YouTube videos or just playing online with your buddies, so you're chatting in discord and whatnot, you're not going to be hearing a bunch of clicking in the background, which is pretty cool. Cause you already get enough clickiness from the keyboard and whatnot. You don't need to add to that with uh, mice to where it sounds like, you know, auditory Tourette's in the background. And uh, there are some settings that I want to cover, guys, to actually get this thing completely optimized for whatever mouse pad you're using, save a little bit of battery life, and hopefully get you guys a couple more kills. I mean, it's not like the mouse is going to automatically make you shroud or TFU or anything like that, but um, it, it, it is a great mouse. Honestly, I have to say it, it's, it's done wonders for my gameplay. I, I can't really attribute, you know me becoming a better shooter here recently to the mouse, but I will have to say that the last month has been good to me in all the uh, shooting games I've been playing. And this is the mouse I've been primarily using. So I don't know. <laughs> it's magical. Yeah, let's Let's get it guys. All right, you guys. So share my screen here. I'm going to go ahead and pop up the Razer Synapse 3 application. And you see you have two separate tabs here for the dock. Yeah, all you can do with the dock is adjust the brightness. But over here with the mouse, you do have a good slew of settings. Now, first of all, before we even touch any of these settings, I want you guys to go in here to the window settings and just type in mouse. It's going to pop this up here. Make sure the cursor is right there at the 50% default. Then go to additional mouse options. Uh, again, make sure it's at the default from Windows. Leave all this default. Come over here and uncheck this box. Enhance pointer precision. Do this with any mouse. Doesn't matter. Wired, wireless, any mouse you have connected to your PC. Uncheck this box. This is going to make it to where your accuracy, your aim in gameplay is not consistent. It's going to try and speed up or slow down the mouse depending on how fast or slow you're moving your hand. And that is not what you want. So unclick that, please. Now coming over here into the actual Razer Synapse 3 application, we're over here in the first tab, Customize. I would recommend disabling these two buttons over here. Uh, as you can see, let me make my thing full screen. Skip the stupid stinger transition. So you have uh, two buttons on this side and you have two buttons on this side. Now they are identical functions. So these will do the exact same functions as these buttons over here. So I just disable them because I noticed I would accidentally t um, press up against them with my pinky and uh, ring finger when I was either fingertip gripping or claw gripping. So uh, I just turn them off because if you're only going to be playing with it right or left-handed, you know, you're not going to be switching back and forth between hands. I highly doubt. So just disable those. You're not going to accidentally actuate them. Uh, over here in performance, I had the sensitivity stages turned off because it's not quickly changeable with this mouse. A lot of uh, mice have a DPI button or CPI button on the top. This one is on the bottom. So I highly doubt you're going to be in gameplay and be like, oh, oh, shoot, I need to snipe. Let me lower my DPI, turn your mouse upside down, take your eyes off the screen, probably take your headset off too so you can hear what's going on in your house. Switch the DPI and then get back on the mouse pad. You'll be dead like six times before that happens. So 
Um, I would just recommend turning them off if you do want them on. I mean, honestly, are you really going to need five stages of adjust adjustment? Probably not. So yeah, you guys couldn't see anything I was saying. That's awesome. So I recommend just having the sensitivity stages turned off. DPI, I've always played at 1800. I know that seems a little bit high for first person shooters. It's really not though. Um, I turn it down a, a couple clicks in game. Um, but it works out phenomenally for me. I can still track slow moving targets and I can also snap and flick aim too. just works out good for me. DPI is honestly, you know, personal preference when it comes to sensitivity and also the surface of your mouse pad makes a huge difference as well, which we are going to cover that in a minute. Polling rate, leave this at its maximum of 1000. That's how many times your mouse is going to refresh and make connection with the PC to the dongle. So that way, uh, you know, it's, it's basically getting the quickest wireless connection. Lighting over here, so you do get the best battery life. You will get that advertised 70 if you turn it completely off. I leave it at 18%. It still leaves that nice little RGB glow on there without really sucking up too much juice. Um, also, to save a little battery life, I have this turned all the way down to where if the um, mouse is untouched for a minute, it's going to go into idle mode. And as soon as you click a button on it or start moving it, it's going to wake back up. And also, if the display turns off, it's going to turn the mouse off. But obviously, the mouse is going to turn off after a minute and my display doesn't turn off for about 30 minutes. Um, also the more advanced lighting features you have showing, if you have some crazy pattern going on, it's flowing through the spectrum and whatnot. Um, you know, like you have something in the chroma studio, which is really cool. By the way, you can actually set up all your devices to coordinate and whatnot. But, um, but, the more advanced lighting you have and the brighter, it's going to take more battery life. So I just have it on the just plain old spectrum cycling. Looks good to me. Calibration over here. So I was using default for the longest time, but I recently calibrated for my mouse. I recommend doing this for your mouse pad. It takes about eh, 30 seconds. And it, uh, you know, it helps because your mouse is actually calibrated for your mouse pad. Now, if it looks a little choppy and whatnot on my screen, this recording is at 60 frames per second, which is the cap for YouTube. Uh, but what I see on my monitor here is 144 hertz, so it looks very fluid, very smooth when I'm moving the cursor around, uh, just trying to browse windows and whatnot. I can quickly open applications and do whatever I need to do. Um, and then once you do that manual calibration, it opens up this window here. I leave the surface distance at the default of five. What this means is you can be higher or closer to your mouse pad. If you're doing liftoffs, if you're doing uh, liftoffs or anything like that, and it will, you know, adjust how powerful that laser, that optical sensor is in there making contact with your mouse pad. So you can get, you know, a few more millimeters off your mouse pad without it uh, stopping to register. Smart tracking over here. I leave this at the uh, lowest tier, because if I'm doing liftoffs, I don't want to have to lift off very far for it to actually stop my movement. So I have that at one and I do leave asymmetrical and I do enable asymmetrical cutoff, which basically um, dynamically adjusts the liftoff and landing cutoff points in millimeters, regardless of the surface it's placed on. So if I switch mouse pads or something, this is still going to be um, the identical liftoff amount, which is cool. And then over here in power, uh, wireless, if it's sitting around for five minutes, it'll completely turn off. So not just the lighting, but the mouse will go into standby mode. So 15% battery life is when I want this to start flashing red to letting me know it's low on a previous wireless mouse. I've had it at about 30% because it would die pretty quickly after that. Again, this mouse, once it's at 15%, you still have like a, a solid eight to eight to 10 hours of gameplay. So 15% is good. And again, it has that cool wireless charging dock, which has two metal prongs. So it just kind of seats on there real easy. Um, and that's, that's very nice. Uh, you don't have to fumble around with a cord as it isn't, um, it's not USB-C, it's micro USB. So you don't have to fumble around with a cord. Uh, this does have a, a port here for if you do want to play wired with this or you do want to charge it without the dock uh, that is an option for you and that is pretty much going to do it guys i know there's not a whole heck of a lot of settings here but hopefully that was beneficial for you guys if it was shove that thumb right up where the sun don't shine go ahead and tally whack that subscribe button and give a little attention to its hot friend the notification bell she's been kind of left out recently all right guys see you in the next video peace